Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And yes, we're doing another Nifty Case video. I love this thing. As you can tell, um, if I don't know if you can see from this shot, I might zoom in, but the crop will be terrible. But I have definitely changed a lot of what's on it already. I've gotten rid of a lot of the modules that I previously bought. But for today, in this video, I'm going to show you how I synced my case with FL Studio and make a little jam and have a little bit of fun in the process. Okay guys, so here we are in FL Studio. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to sync the MIDI section of the Nifty Case in FL Studio than it was in VCB Rack. So I will show you uh, really quick how to do it. And then I'll show you a little jam. We'll get to jamming. So first you need to make sure that your Nifty Case is plugged in via USB into your computer. Uh, and it should show up when you go to Options, System, MIDI Settings, or you just put the F10 key if you use Windows, uh, and it'll show up this little window box. You need to make sure to so that your Nifty Case is receiving signals uh, from FL Studio. You need to make sure that both the input and output are synced to the same port number. And this is also important when you use the plugin that's the actual interface that's sending MIDI messages. So in this instance, I've already synced my Nifty Case to port 1 in the MIDI section. And you also need to make sure that this Send Master Sync button is also enabled, and it's enabled as an input down here uh, for the Nifty Case. So that's all you need to do in MIDI settings. Uh, and now to actually send MIDI and gate messages to uh, the Nifty Case, you need to make sure that you have, if you were to find it in the list, it would be the MIDI Out plugin. Uh, in the channel rack and when you open this interface all you have to do is just make sure that uh, the port number here matches and just remember that since there are two different channels there's a CV1 gate 1 CV2 gate 2 um, you need to make sure that whatever ports you're using from the MIDI section that the channel number matches whatever outputs your cabling uh, and that you're sending signals through this is all the legwork that you need to do here in as far as the MIDI programming on FL Studio. Now I'll go over to the case and show you what I have in this specific patch. Okay guys, so here is the patch that I have going. Since I am only using one channel and one MIDI out plugin from FL Studio, I'll only have access to CV1 and Gate1. So to have this voice work, you need to make sure that you have some kind of VCA with your oscillator if you want the oscillator to react to the gate length that you're giving it in the piano roll in FL Studio. So for this instance, I have the Takab 2 LPG. I'd wonderfully recommend this, and I'm probably going to make another video about this individual module later uh, because it's super cheap and it's in low pass gate, but it also acts as a VCA and I use it as a VZ VCA, hello words, a lot of the time. So what I have going from here is the gate, so whatever I draw in the piano roll lengthwise, um, all that information is coming out of gate one since I've only programmed it through channel one, and that's going into the CV input of the Takab 2 LPG, this low pass gate. Uh, I'm using chips for my voice, I wanted something nice that's very uh, different from a performance VCO like Hysteria, uh, and I just wanted something gritty. Uh, for this specific jam, you're gonna, I hope you guys like it. But anyways, so that's going into the input. So now that we have the gate information going into the CV and an output from chips, in this case, it'll be the uh, pulse width one with the adjustable pulse width. It's going into the input of the Takab and the output of all this is going into the output of the Nifty case. Great. Now what about pitch? So the pitch is gonna come from the CV1 port here, this jack, leftmost jack, uh, from channel one, AKA CV1. And I'm running that into the same pitch of chip two on chips. Uh, and now whatever I draw in on the piano roll pitch wise, it's going to replicate. You just need to make sure that you tune it. So um, I have a decent ear, so I, turned, I tuned it to C and now everything is playing within the key that I played in. And that's basically how you program the voice. Capiche? Cool. So now, enough blabbering. I want to jam. Let's have some fun with this.
wasn't the cleanest performance of this patch, but it was fun regardless. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked that jam that I did on the Nifty case. I am really, really, really happy about how much I can get out of it. Having this MIDI section on the Nifty case really does mitigate the need for a lot of modules if you don't mind working with your computer with all of your analog gear. I am thinking of doing a new special called uh, Bleep Bloop Break where it's just a patch that I do sim spontaneously on my case and I just record a little bit of it and share it with y'all. If y'all would like to see that or see more of this modular content, please let me know in the comments. Your input is everything to me and it really does guide what I'm trying to, or what I am doing. Not what I'm trying to do. Bruh. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions about how this works, please, please, please ask in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this jam. I will see you for the next video.